Nice. Who could heed the words of Charlie Darwin? What on earth can the bluesy, folky, indie US band Below Anthem have against Charles Darwin? What on earth has he ever done to them? Well, it turns out that they aren't a bunch of fundamental creationists, which was always a possibility. Rather, they object vehemently to the way that Darwin's ideas have been used. So what specifically were they thinking of? Well, the lyrics are a bit obscure if you go and look them up, but through investigating interviews that they gave, it would seem that they objected to the way that Darwinian biology has been converted into direct and often nasty interventions into society and culture. I'm sure they had in mind eugenics and probably Hitler too, but what is striking about the lyric is that they obviously blame Charles Darwin for the way his ideas have been used. It's the underlying purpose of this lecture to probe this type of critique, exploring not only social Darwinism and its complicated relationship with eugenics, but also to think and to keep thinking and keeping it in the back of your minds whether a scientist or indeed science itself can be held responsible for the failings that occur on the back of the ideas that are generated. This was something we touched upon in the last workshop and there did seem to be a range of opinions about whether, for example, the scientists who developed the atomic bomb should be held accountable for their invention or indeed what exactly the overlap between science and ethics should be. So, can Darwin be held account for the atrocities that appear to have derived from his discoveries? Tonight on Brass Eye, has science gone too far. Tonight, science in the dock. Science, you are accused of going too far, of befouling, pollutment and the intoxication of men's minds. Science has increased our understanding of suffering, but has it really helped? This recent experiment in... The comedic genius of Chris Morris, comedy terrorist, here, here satirising the media in his brilliant Brass Eye series of the 1990s. So little has changed. Morris goes on to explore the moral responsibilities or lack of moral responsibilities of the scientists in this quite absurd sketch. Is it right for scientists to play with time? 
You've got two mice to give birth to a second. And when I looked over, the clock on the wall was... Well, it was throwing up. And there was a wonderful blue light. Everywhere. Everybody noticed it. And a sensation like um, a yawn going backwards inside you. In June this year, the same men isolated and blew up a fortnight. And I turned around and whack. I was four miles down the road, lying on my face next to a little tree that I hadn't uh, been meant to be next to for about two weeks. But does science take responsibility? Anything that went on in that fortnight or went on out of it, depending on how you look at it, it was that fortnight's fault, not ours. It was simply a bad fortnight. Innocent or guilty? In the history of Darwin and Darwinian ideas, there is perhaps nothing more controversial than the relationship between the great man and the social theories that were based upon his scientific theories, particularly the issue of eugenics, a programme that appeared to culminate in the atrocities of the Nazis. Indeed, from Jennings Bryan through to Ray Comfort and from Comfort to the Discovery Centre, uh, the Discovery Centre being one of the principal think tanks and websites of the intelligent designers, Darwin is held to account for the sins of eugenics. Often the rationale runs something like this. Darwinism, with its emphasis upon struggle and competition, and its insistence that human morality was nothing more than evolved animal morality, and certainly not God-ordained, dissolved the moral bonds of society, allowing the horrors of the eugenics and euthanasia movements to thrive. As we will see in the lecture that follows, the fundamentalists are not alone in drawing the long bow from Darwin to the Nazis, but they're the most vocal, even if their polemic is specifically aimed at discrediting Darwin the man as well as Darwin the theorist. Obviously, it would be an understatement to say that scientists, particularly biological scientists, are uncomfortable with the analogy here, the moral character of Darwin is defended, and rather like the scientist in Chris Morris's Brass Eye spoof, science, anything which happened in that two weeks is not our responsibility, believe that anything that happened as a result of Darwin's ideas were not the problem of science, just people using science the wrong way. So too with many historians. In fact, it was the association of Hitler with Darwin and the oft-repeated accusation that Darwin's ideas had infected the world, creating scientific racism, colonialism, war and eugenics that prompted Bowler to write Darwin Deleted, an attempt to demonstrate that much of the horror that has been attributed to Darwin would have happened anyway, a theme to which we'll return in the next lecture. But for now, what I aim to do is firstly to provide a history of the origins of social Darwinism before looking in subsequent modules at the emergence and flourishing and death of eugenics before sketching out the arguments about whether Darwin himself was a social Darwinist. <laughs>